Hello everyone, this is Dhruvajiti and welcome back to Hacksert. Today in this video, we'll be taking a look at file checksums, alright, as to what they are and what are the purposes of them. So in this video, we'll be taking a theoretical look as well as we'll be taking a practical look as to how you can check for a certain file's checksum. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. Now if you haven't subscribed yet, then please hit the red subscribe button and also hit the bell notification icon so that you remain notified each time we upload a video. So what is a file checksum, alright? So a file checksum, uh, checksum can be considered as a fingerprint of a certain file, alright? Like every human has a certain fingerprint, your finger, you have a certain fingerprint, your fingerprint is not going to match with somebody else, alright? Even if you have a twin brother or sister or anybody in your family member, it's not going to match with anyone else in this entire world, alright? So, similarly, your fingerprint is not going to match with anybody else. Your fingerprint is the one and only complete identity, alright? As to who you are. Whenever you, you see, whenever any sort of criminal investigation takes place at a certain place, they try to, you know, find any sort of fingerprint is present at that uh, crime scene or not so that it is it becomes very easy to determine which uh, which person has done the crime or at least which person was present during in the crime scene when the crime happened so similarly whenever a file is made any sort of a file it can be any file or right anything any sort of a computer file or any sort of a file any app anything it has a certain checksum all right the checksum is uh, somewhat like a file uh, files fingerprint you can call it so that checksum actually what happens is that uh, every file is coded all right uh, be it coded in java python or anything it is coded in a certain language now whenever you try to change the one line or two lines of that code then the entire checksum will change so we'll be taking a practical look at it when you will take a practical look at it you will understand the thing very easily so a checksum can be in the form of a hash it is generally in the form of a hash and it may be md5 or sha1 or sha256 or any one of the uh, hashes that are uh, available generally you will find either md5 or sha1 or sha256 you will find any one of the three mentioned over here now checksums are the best or probably the only way to test the originality of a certain file easily all right now you must have seen that whenever a paid software is made available they generally somebody or the other uh, in this uh, entire world they generally you know release the cracked version of that per certain file now i don't uh, support piracy but what these people do is that whenever a cracked software is released they generally try to you know change the coding of the file so that the file uh, when it is running it will not ask you for that money all right it will simply uh, cut the communication gap communication medium between the file or between the client and the server so that the file doesn't ask you to pay the money uh, before you actually uh, use the file to the full extent so whenever they want to you know break that communication medium they will try to change some uh, change those things that are written in that coding all right they'll try to change the coding in that certain file so that that prompt doesn't come up when in which the file will ask you to pay some amount of money so if they try to change it if they try to do some uh, what should i say uh, modifications in that in the coding of that certain file its checksum will completely change now whenever you will download a certain file from a certain location from a certain website or something if the website is the original website if the website is the official website you will see uh, that the whenever the download link is wherever the download link is present beside that you will see md5 or sha1 and then a big hash will be present what does that mean that is actually the checksum all right and if you download the file from some other location let's say from an unofficial website let's say there is a file hosting website and you downloaded that particular file from that particular website and you want to judge whether or not that file is real file or uh, something or the other has been changed in the coding of that certain file then you can judge that by determining the uh, the checksum of that particular file and then you can uh, uh, I mean double check it with the original checksum that is available in the original website 
So what are the best tools to test for the checksum of a certain file? Now there are many tools to check the checksum of a certain file. Now as I said MD5, uh, SHA1 and SHA256, they are, now there is rarely any tool you know that can let you find the uh, all the types of checksums alright. One tool and it will find MD5 checksum of a file and SHA1 checksum, SHA256 checksum, it is very rare. All right. Uh, generally, different types of different algorithm checksums have different tools. So, MD5 is the I mean the checksum category that is most widely used. I mean, if you go and visit any website wherein you want to download something, uh, I mean in the official website obviously, then you will find the MD5 checksum available over there. There is a 90 to 95 percent probability that you will find the MD5 checksum. And if you want to test the MD5 checksum of a certain file in which we'll be taking a look at a little bit later on. So you can use a tool named MD5 sum, alright. I use this tool for quite a long time and it is a pretty easy tool. It is a command line utility. You, it is free and it is a very small tool, extremely small tool. You can go ahead and download it and you need to have command prompt obviously in your computer which you will have. And this tool uh, runs via the command prompt that is the MS DOS or whatever you call it. And it is the most widely, uh, MD5 is the most widely used checksum algorithm. So MD5 sum, if you have MD5 sum, then you can, <coughs> excuse me, you can easily test the MD5 checksum of that particular file. Now we will be taking a look at how this is done, all right. Alright, so now let's have a look at how you can download and use the MD5 checksum utility. So simply go up to Google and search here for MD5 sum. And you can see that there is a Wikipedia link. Just go down a little bit. Here you can see that there is a website named pctools.net. Just open this up. This is a very simple website. You can see that uh, it, it does not have as much features and it doesn't look like a modern generation website and here you can see that the download link is present it says md5 sum 1.2 zip and it is just a 28 kb file all right it's so small that i cannot tell you as small as the hair of uh, diameter of my hair anyways so you can just down click on this zip file and it will uh, you can download it like this and then extract it after you extract the file, you'll see that there is a md5 sum.exe and a text file will be present. I'll be showing you both of them. So let me cancel this out. This is Apache r 310 my favorite motorcycle from the Indian brands. What's your favorite? You can post it. You can write it in the comments. All right. Now, this is the md5 sum utility you can see over here. And this is the text file that you that you will find. Uh, in the zip files if you simply open it here you can see obviously the usage details and features and all that stuff you can go ahead you can go and go to, uh, read all these if you want to but uh, boring stuff who wants to read those now since this is in the desktop you can simply open up the file manager and go up to the directory in which the md5 sum utility is is located in this case it is in the desktop so i'll be going up to the desktop and over here you can see that the in the address bar just uh, click over there and type in cmd all right and just press enter now this will open up the command prompt in that particular directory you can see that it is c colon black, uh, backslash users do it today and desktop now <clears throat> I will be testing the MD5 sum of this particular Python script that I have written over here. If you want, you can uh, let me open this up in Notepad++. You can see that this is, this is the code present over here and I'll be basically testing the MD5 sum of this, uh, MD5 checksum of this particular Python script and we'll be, I'll be showing you how if you simply, you know, change something, uh, change one simple thing and uh, try to save the file or if you change something on all you'll see that the checksum completely changes if you just change one alphabet if you just add in a space somewhere if you replace one alphabet with something else then also the entire checksum is going to change how this happens let me tell you 
let me show it to you so here you can see i have not changed anything it's in the original state and if i just simply uh, you can see that the save option is not coming because it's already saved and i haven't changed something now let's close this out now now in the directory in which the md md5 sum utility is present um it is a good practice to keep that particular file which you are testing for in the same directory as the md5 sum directory as the directory in which the md5 sum utility is present all right so it in this case it is in the desktop so simply type in md5 and then press a tab as you can see it auto completes uh, md5 sums dot exe all right and then press uh, space and this is the file that i'll be testing as i said this is a python script now you don't have to you know uh, paste in the copy and paste the directory of this particular file just click it and drag it onto the command prompt and as you can see uh, that the complete directory has been uh, typed in automatically and you can see double quotes are present it doesn't matter if the double quotes are present even if you erase it it doesn't matter leave it as it is and just press enter and as you can see that the uh, file location will be uh, given over here as to where it is located in this case you can see it is in the desktop and the name of the file which is p.py and this is the md5 checksum all right and now let me just open up notepad notepad yes and if i just simply you know copy this particular checksum if i can let me copy this one and if I just simply paste it over here, uh, font size, let's increase the font size to let's say 22 for example. Yeah, now you can see that this is the checksum of the original Python script that I, uh, original checksum of the Python script that I have tested. And this is the checksum. I have enlarged the font so that you can easily see and we'll be testing the differences, all right, when you will be uh, doing some changes in that particular file. So let's minimize this one and open this up in let's notepad plus plus. Now this is the original code and if I just simply press enter and I'll put in a line over here. All right, print and I'll be typing in here subscribe to excerpt. As you can see, I have uh, put in a print statement in this particular Python script. By the way, you can check out hexer.com for Python, Python course. It is free of cost. You can go ahead and check it out. All right. Link will be in the description. So print subscribe to Hexert. And if I just simply save this one and close it. Now, again, I'll be testing this particular. Uh, I, again, I'll be testing the checksum of this particular file. Now, since we have typed the command already uh, previously, now you don't have to type the same command once again. Just press the up arrow key in your keyboard and you can see that the previous command automatically comes in and press enter. And this time, you, as you can see that the checksum has changed. I am copying this one and I am showing you in the with the larger font. You can see that the entire checksum has changed. All right. We just put in a line of code in the particular pipe in that particular Python script. And as you can see that the entire checksum has changed. It's not that the initial part or the something up to the end part has changed, but the entire thing has changed. All right, I'll be showing you one more thing, one more time. Let's do this once again. This time I'll be, uh, this time I'll be adding a line of comment. All right, so edit with Notepad plus plus and <clears throat> hash. This is a print statement. ENT. So this is a comment as you can see it starts with a hash and this is a print statement and let's save this one close it again let's test out this time also the checksum has completely changed all right if I just simply open up the notepad and paste you can see that the checksum has entirely changed you can see that everything has changed it's not that the initial part or the final part or the uh, bid range has changed but everything has changed in all the three cases you can see that the entire checksum has changed all right now i'll be showing you one more time let's open this up this time we'll just be you know changing one alphabet we'll just be changing one alphabet and we'll see what happens 
Now, here you can see that hexert is written, that is the name of the channel itself. Now, this C, that cert C, it is capitalized over here. Now, we'll make it small. All right, we have made it small, uh, the lowercase alphabet C, and let's, uh, let's save this one and close it. And again, we'll be testing it. And as you can see that the entire checksum has changed. It's not that only one part or a certain part has changed. But this time the entire checksum has also changed. You can see each and every time no matter how much big change or how much small change you make. If you make any sort of a change, the checksum is going to change. That is the simple thing. This is, you know, used to check the originality of a certain file. Whether or not somebody has done some sort of manipulation in the file or not. Whether you are using the original file or not somebody has put in a trojan or a malware in attached to the original file or not you can all check it using these checksum utilities all right so if you don't have any checksum utility then i highly recommend you use this md5 sum utility all right and i'll be showing you one example as to where this can be used and if i just maximize the screen now there is a very popular utility known as champ or XAMPP or XAMPP whatever you call it this is a simple and free utility that can be used to run Apache server in your computer right you it is not enterprise based you, you this is mainly used to you know do some sort of testing or something and here you can see I'm on the download page of that particular software which is the Apache friends dot com uh, dot org slash download and here you can see the version number what's included and all and here you can see that checksum is written. This is the MD5 and the SHA1 checksum. So if you happen to download this file from the original source, then you can double check the checksum, all right, with that MD5 sum utility since here MD5 sum is, MD5 checksum is present. As I said, 90 to 95% of the cases you will find MD5 checksum present. But let's say you didn't download this utility from this official website, but you prefer to download it from any other website or maybe from some other store for example app store or something now over there what is the guarantee that the uh, file hosting server or the applications website is giving you the original file and they haven't changed anything what is the guarantee they, if they say you that no we didn't change anything now by simply looking at the file or if simply using the file you won't be able to see any major changes the only thing that can let you know whether or not some kind of a change has taken place is through these MD5 sums or uh, the, through these checksums, all right? So I highly recommend you use any one utility, especially this MD5 sum utility. This is a very small tool. Let's go to the properties. You can see it's 28 KB, size on disk is 28 KB. So you can easily uh, see that the file is very small extremely small so it won't eat up your space or something all right so that's all about how you can uh, use this particular tool and what are checksums and all this stuff i hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed the video then you can go ahead and like the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are new and i'll see you guys in the next video peace